It's Madden NFL 23 on EA Sports, where division rivals will clash in the AFC South. It's the Indianapolis Colts and the Jacksonville Jaguars. Coming up next. Smack dab in the middle of I-295 that encircles the city of Jacksonville in Northeast Florida. There's a good look at TIAA Bank Field. Straight ahead, we've got a good one on tap here between the Indianapolis Colts and the Jacksonville Jaguars. And hi again, everybody. Alongside my partner, Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gauden. And Charles, when you and I were going through our final run-throughs at breakfast, we kept thinking tonight we're going to get to see a couple of very good passing offenses. And we're talking about both sides having multiple receivers that could have an impact on this game. It's not just one guy that's going to make all the plays. If you take him away, maybe number two, number three, they make the big plays that impact who wins the game. Get us started is Logan Cook, and off we go from Jacksonville. As Indy's offense takes the field for the first time, we take a look at Matt Ryan, top 10 all-time in passing yards, playing his first career season outside of Atlanta. And a storied career that has spanned 14 seasons and nearly 60,000 yards through the air, we are seeing a brand new chapter for Matt Ryan this year. With Atlanta in a rebuild, Ryan was dealt to Indianapolis, where he's their sixth week one quarterback in six seasons. One of the most decorated quarterbacks still active, this move will keep Ryan on a contender as he chases his first career Super Bowl title. On the opening play, here's Ryan. And oh, right away, he lost the football. And the Jags grab it. And he brings this one back. A fumble return for a Jacksonville score. Huge, huge play by the defense, not only to force the fumble, obviously, but to return it for a touchdown. And I know it's no fun for anyone who plays offense, but isn't it fun to see how a defense rallies when there's a fumble return and everyone tries to find someone to block and bring it all the way home? But I always like their celebrations because they don't get there that often. No, they're not choreographed very well, usually. <laughs> Riley Patterson now for the extra point. And this is up and good. The score now 7 nothing Jaguars. So not only the clock up, but then the pick up on the other side, the scoop, and the score the other way. The fumble return for a touchdown. And you can bet they're preaching two hands on the ball here as the kicks away following that fumble return. And Rodgers will hold on to this one, and it'll come out to the 25. Second drive coming up here for the Indianapolis Colts. And let's just say they're going to be looking to start over on this drive. A few moments ago, they were in the exact situation, but their first play led to a fumble that was returned for six. Yeah, you definitely have to have a short memory to play in the NFL. you got to remember what you did wrong so you don't repeat it. But you can't dwell on it because then you will repeat it, and that's what you don't want to do. And that is incomplete. Took a shot there on first down, but he couldn't reel it in. So following the incompletion, here's second and 10 from the 25. Ryan. They'll try and set up the screen to Hines. And he'll be out of bounds right at the 40. That one for Indianapolis resulting in 15 yards and a fresh set of downs. We can talk all we want about football being a game of strength and brawn. It's also a game of mismatches, and they're trying to create one there, getting it to their back out of the backfield to make a bigger play. As we often say, get it to him in space, let him use his leg. Yeah, if, if he can get a matchup against a linebacker, or maybe a defensive end dropping out in a zone blitz, he's going to win that battle just about every time. They'll throw on first down with Ryan. And that's caught left side by Mo Ali Cox. Holding offense. 
And that's on the tackle, Braden Smith. Still first down. They're backed up here with a first and 20 now after the holding penalty. To throw is Ryan. This will be taken in by Michael Pittman. A gain of eight there on the play. And it'll be second down. Throwing again, Ryan. Now that's into the hands of Mo Ali Cox, the tight end. So the completion good for six yards. And it brings up 35 now. Ryan. Toward the sideline, he will have the first down. Good catch, he was able to keep the feet inbounds. Give him six yards and they do convert on third. We've seen quite a bit of the short passing game here early on first quarter, haven't we? We have, and I think it works a couple of ways for, for this team because, number one, you throw the short game until they stop it. And if they're not going to stop it, you keep throwing it, and occasionally you'll break a tackle and turn into a bigger game. Also, if they start to creep up, start to pressure receivers, now you go over the top, take it deep, and now you get some of those big shots downfield. So in Jacksonville territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 49-yard line. They'll run. This is Jonathan Taylor. Now they nearly sprung him that time as he takes this all the way down to the 37. Indianapolis moving the chains there on a gain of 12. Some big plays in the passing game on this drive, and here's one out of the running game. So the passing game loosening things up. Now there's room to roam. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Ryan. He'll check this down to Hines. And he's going to be marked down just inside the 35. Second and seven, operating from the 34. Now Ryan. He'll fight. Now a loose football. The ball comes out. And did the Jaguars come up with it? They did. After one, seven nothing on EA Sports. Second quarter now from Jacksonville, and it's the Jags with the football. Lawrence bringing the Jaguars up first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. And not much to speak of. Call it a one-yard gain up to the 26. Well, sometimes you just have to give credit to the defense. Great job there at the point of attack, holding up. They won their battles at the line of scrimmage, left it no space to try and run. A really nice job swarming to the ball carrier. And for the Colts, an extra defensive back in there now on third down. Draw play, ETN. It'll be a gain of four, but it won't be enough. It leaves him with a fourth down now. So opening drive, three straight runs, unable to pick up the first. I know the fans want to see first downs, but guess what? The coaches have reasons for what they're doing. Sometimes they've scripted it, and some of these runs, while they haven't been successful now, they may be successful later on. Logan Cook to punt. Back deep for the Colts, Naheem Hines. And he'll get this away into the humid Florida sky. And a nice job here to down this one right on the five-yard line. That is how you flip field position. That's an absolute bomb of a punt. Downs it inside the five-yard line. Absolutely ideal. From that position, you're hoping to get it down inside the 15, inside the five. Superb. A carry by Taylor to start the drive. And a short gain here as he gets it up only to about the six. Credited with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine.
A reminder coming up at halftime, Jonathan Coachman will join us from Orlando with our halftime report. But business to take care of before we get there. A two-minute drill before the coaches' two-minute drill. On second and nine, Ryan. That ball caught by Campbell. Touchdown, Indianapolis. Paris Campbell, 94 yards. And the Colts are able to strike quickly here as they are in for six. And I think it's safe to say we won't call many touchdown passes longer than that this year, partner. No, I would agree with that totally. And right now you're looking at an offensive coordinator. Conservative would not go next to his name. <laughs> Risk taker, definitely, because he valued the opportunity to create a big play against what could have been disaster if they end up getting sacked or fumbling the ball in the shadow of their own goal line. Extra point by Blankenship is up and good, and we are tied at seven. The long touchdown pass gets them six on a very, very tidy two-play drive that time. So I'll leave it at seven now as they kick it away. Fielded just outside the goal line. And his guys will get the football right at the 20-yard line. So time to see Jacksonville again on offense for the second time here in this game. As we eat closer and closer to intermission, Charles, remember last time out they punted. They would love to get points here, especially if this is going to be their final possession of the first half. Yeah, and this is what close games feel like because the pressure is on both sides, but sometimes the pressure is a little bit higher on the team with a slight edge because they're trying to hold on to that, trying to increase it. Let's see how this one continues. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. On first and 10, it's Robinson. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. After the pickup of five, here's second and five. That's a really nice, tough run inside, and they gained five yards on it. And to be frank about it, most offenses don't expect to get five yards on a play call like that. So when they do, they go back to their huddle with a little pep in their steps. They're starting to think that they're starting to dominate the line of scrimmage. For a lot of guys playing this game, there's no better feeling than running right through a tackle. He's able to lower his center of gravity and churn his legs for a really nice pickup. Come on, set. Now Lawrence on first down. Looking downfield for Jones. And it's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. On the set. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. He's going to let this go. Back of the end zone. And that's going to be incomplete. Good effort there. Trying to take a shot, but it's third down. The threat of a second straight punt to start the game is looming as they come up third and ten. He lets this one fly toward the back of the end zone. And that will be incomplete. Well, they weren't scared to let it fly, but it falls to the ground and brings up fourth down. Trying to get the ball to his tight end in the center of the field where he runs a lot of his routes and ostensibly is extremely comfortable. He was hoping he'd find a seam and a big gainer to go along with it, but that one was incomplete. They're going to try and throw. Looking for Jones, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Stephon Gilmore, and he's able to get it back here to the 43-yard line. A young quarterback, Charles, rolling to his right. I know he's right-handed, but is that one that maybe a veteran sticks in his pocket? I think so, but you have to remember with young quarterbacks, it may take a few years before they get all the stuff out of them that they did earlier in their career or even in their college days when they were used to being dominant. In this case, the NFL veteran defense ended up winning the battle. After the interception, here's Ryan. Sideline throw, it's complete. And a nice job there of keeping the toes inbounds. It'll be a gain of nine, and that'll give them a short yardage situation here for second down. Now it's Ryan. They'll set up the screen to Taylor. And he'll be marked down at about the 26-yard line. Now a timeout signaled for, and they'll get it with 10 seconds to go before halftime. 
For a second there, I thought that might break big. Screen pass, looked like it was coming together, looked like there was an opening. Still, ended up with a solid game. Now Ryan on first down. Got a man, it's Pittman, and he holds it in for the Colts touchdown. A great play there in the final seconds of the first half. And the Colts have taken the lead here in the final stages of this first half. CD for them, this has just been an offensive explosion here in the second quarter. Yeah, it held scoreless in the first quarter. Now they find the end zone again here in the second. Sometimes you just have to have some patience. A lot of people think it's always an adjustment. You have to change what you're doing. Sometimes you just have to do your game plan just a little bit better. And I think that's part of what we're seeing here. Extra point by Blankenship is up and good. And that makes the score 14-7. to seven. Take it in at the three. Now a crease here as he's past the 30. And pretty good field position here. He's out of bounds right at the 35. Jaguars come to the line to start their next drive. Final play of the half. It's Lawrence going for the deep ball. That's going to be knocked away and incomplete. So we come to halftime here with the visiting Colts taking the lead to the locker room as we now go downstate to Orlando and check in with Jonathan Coachman with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. Back to you guys in a bit. But first, we welcome everyone to our EA Sports Halftime Report. First, though, a check of the next-gen stats in that first half for the Colts. And they've had all sorts of success thus far tonight throwing the football as they're on pace to throw for 300-plus yards if things continue the way they've been going. Meanwhile, for the Jaguars, we check on their numbers on the ground in the first half as they know they'll need to be better to overcome this halftime deficit. All right, Coach, thanks. Yeah, both teams likely to make some changes in what's been a closely fought battle to this point. Fielded just outside the goal line. Oh, a good-looking return set up here. And they'll start this drive just across the 30. Pretty nice work on the return. Out come the Jaguars now as they'll go on offense first here in this third quarter. Charles, it'll be interesting to see what adjustments this offense made in the locker room. Haven't really been able to get anything going offensively, virtually nothing in the ground attack either. So certainly something has to change here in quarter three. And I'm pretty sure their friends from the defensive side of the ball told them exactly that because those guys, the stop troops, they've been playing pretty well. They've kept them around in this game. Now they got some time. The running game struggled in the first half. The opposition knows how to focus on defending the pass here. They've got to re-energize that ground game and maybe open things up for a comeback here in this half. And now a shot taken on third down, and it's going to wind up incomplete. I'm sure this isn't a novel thought, but maybe run some simpler routes instead of trying to get it all back in one shot. Defense certainly appears to be ready for him. Try and get it back little by little instead of in big chunks. A very nice punt that time, but they get 11 back on the return. And the Colts will go on offense here, first and 10. Ryan and the Colts getting set here, first and 10. At their own 26, they'll start with a give to Taylor. Calling no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. Here's Ryan to throw. It's his, and it's a fumble. And the Jags grab it. And he'll return it to the 24-yard line. So turnovers, Charles, your figure will be key in the second half, and that's a big giveaway there. Yeah, and as you and I both know, coaches are always preaching ball security, and none more often than right here in the second half of a tight football game. Now you've got to believe what the coaches are saying and take care of that football. with the handoff to Robinson. 
And he is out of bounds. Looks like right at the 15. A nice run there, nine yards, and it'll be second down. You know what really fires up offensive linemen? When the guy that is carrying the ball behind them can create his own space and break a tackle along the way. Got his man, it's caught. Touchdown, Jaguars. Evan Ingram, a 15-yard touchdown grab. And the Jaguars take the force fumble and convert it into six points. Such an art to dot the I, just get the feet in right there against the line before going out of bounds. Such an incredibly graceful, athletic play, but also a lot of practice goes into it. They work on that to make sure that they learn how to train their feet to get down in bounds. Extra point try now for Patterson. And we've got a good one, Burl, and Burl not it up at 14. They have the short field, and they made quick work of it. Just two plays to get into the end zone. This one tied at 14 now as he sends this one away. Bringing it out of his end zone, Isaiah Rodgers. Now a hit and a loose football. And the Jags grab it. And they will score. It's a Jacksonville touchdown. So problems here on special teams, and it results in the scoop and the score. They talk all the time on special teams about keeping your head on a swivel, trying to see the whole field. Hard to do when things are going that fast, bodies all over the place. You're just trying to find the right guy to align yourself with. On that play, wow. Patterson now for the extra point. It's up and good, and that'll make the score 21-14. The scoop and score is always an exciting play in football, and we witnessed it there, grabbing it off the ground, and then rumbling it into the end zone for six. So here's the kickoff now as he'll get it again following that fumble return for a score. And not willing to risk another fumble, he'll sit on this one. It's a touchback. And the Colts getting ready to go. Last time out, they had the fumble. That led to the touchdown. Not a great look on either side of the ball as the defense gave up the points to Charles. But they've got to take care of the football and do better here on this possession. It's certainly been a tough stretch, partner, for both of those units. And they kind of put their defensive mates in a really tough spot there by dropping the ball on the ground. But an easy way to make it up to them, get out there now and get some points on this drive. On second and nine, Ryan. That one finds Pierce right side. That's good. The completion there for seven yards. And it makes it third down and two yards to go. They'll try and run for the first with Taylor. Only three there on the pickup, but that's enough to move the chains. I haven't met a football team yet that runs the ball successfully that doesn't talk about having an attitude to be a running football team, right? You gotta be able to put your nose in there, smell where the first down sticks are, and get there. Let's go, get it Let's go, boy. Ready, so from the 36 now, first and 10. going to get to the line to run another play. So we will switch ends as the third quarter has come to a close. This is the National Football League on EA Sports. Back now in Jacksonville. It's the Colts, so they've got the football, but they've got work to do trailing here as we begin the fourth quarter. Throwing now, Ryan on first down. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Hines. And he will lose yardage here to the 31-yard line. 
So it goes as a completed pass, but they lose a full five yards. Got to give some credit there defensively. They snuffed out that screen early on first down. Really read it well, didn't they? Because they didn't bring the pressure that they expected. They covered all the passing lanes. So once you see it break down as the passer, I think in this situation, you're throwing it at the feet of your back to make sure no one picks it off, or you throw it away, throw it over the sideline. Don't try and freelance and try and make a bigger play. There's really no one else running a pattern that should be open. Second and 15. Here's Ryan. Over the middle, into the hands of Woods. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. You tackle them almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays, harder to move it. And he can only manage to take the football to the 40, and that is well shy of the first down marker. Five yards, not enough, and it'll be fourth down. And that's a play that's not uncommon on third and long because the offense is just hoping that somehow they can get a guy in space and follow some blockers downfield. Does a pretty nice job there getting a few yards, but he ends up getting stopped before he can get the first down. Here we go. It's Ryan on fourth down. And, and now the ball's out. Fumble near midfield, and the Jags grab it. And he's able to get it back here to the 43 yard line. Whenever I see a team turn it over on back to back drives, fumbles on their last two, I know one person's blood pressure who is starting to rise, and that's the head coach. Absolutely. And when's it going to go down? Will they stop fumbling? <laughs> when they stop fumbling and after he's assessed the game ball, and only if they manage to win the game. Here comes the Jaguars' offense as they get set here. They'll be hoping to work a little clock and try to add on to this slim fourth quarter lead. But whatever happens on this drive, certainly a huge fumble recovery by their defense at this juncture. Now, meanwhile, a pass that should have been intercepted, but it winds up falling incomplete. So it's Jaguar football here as we welcome you back. So second down, still 10 yards to go. Ball on the 43. Second down and a run by Robinson. And now we're going to get a timeout defensively. So another stop, 150 left in the football game. The line to gain is the 33 on third down. On third down, Robinson. Well, this is going to depend on the spot, but it's not a very generous one. He looks to be about a yard or so short. He close. Did he get there? No, they're going to say he's short of the line to gain. Now the gadget play here on fourth down winds up backfiring. And the Colts are going to take over with a football. So that's a decision that could loom pretty large here. They go for it on fourth down, but come up empty. But I actually like the call. And the reason? It shows me a head coach has faith in his team overall. First on the offensive side, thinking they can pick it up but also knowing that he has faith in his defense that if they don't, they'll go out there and stop him. I like the confidence he showed. Here's Ryan finding Pittman, and he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. First down now, but that clock rolling. Here's Ryan. A short throw. This is caught by Cox, and he'll be out of bounds just shy of the 40. Indianapolis moving the chains there on a gain of 12. Working the sideline there. Good route, good catch. First down, and he gets out of bounds. Yeah, you have to like the play calling because you have to run some guys down the middle of the field to draw some of the defenders away. They can't just let them guard the sideline exclusively. That's how it's going to work. Sidelines and incompletions to use the clock. The drive continues as they search for a tying touchdown. Here's first and 10. Ryan to throw. That's complete to Pierce. And he'll get this one down near the 20-yard line, just shy of the 20. Counting down toward a minute to go in this football game. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. 
And they work this near the five. He'll be stopped at the six. A looming decision to make on the conversion down seven. But for fighting for the end zone, he lost the football. It's out. And the Jags grab it. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. And they were hoping to get down there, get the score, and get this thing into overtime. How deflating. Absolutely. I mean, let's face it, heartbreaking. They had an opportunity, had a chance, and probably were feeling pretty good about what was going on, and that was taken away from them by their own mistake. Yeah, the opportunity squashed. Here we go, here we go. Now a handoff to start it out. Robinson. Now the Colts will use their third and final timeout as they stop it here with just under 40 seconds to go in the game. Another running situation on the doorstep as they come up second and 10. Again, it's Robinson. Give him three yards, and now they're left needing a conversion here on third and six. They are in need of six yards here if they hope to move the chains. Straight ahead, it's Robinson. And he'll lose yardage and be down at the seven-yard line. He lost two, and it brings up four. That second half, Charles, a little bit different from the first. Not only did we have the lead change after intermission, but they were able to pitch the shutout in the second half and get an impressive victory. And what's the old expression? That's not quite how I saw it playing out in my head. You know they didn't expect this at all. As you mentioned, went into the half of the lead. Losing the game is one thing. Getting shut out in the second half, that's a surprise.